Hey guys, Pablo with BND, and today at Top Reddit Post, we're gonna be taking a look at Tales from Tech Support. And don't forget, subscribe, hit that notifications button, and give us a like and a comment in the end of this video. When the boss refused to initiate the ultimate IT fix, posted by u slash the 123 king Reddit, Cass, me, me, boss, boss. One of our VM holes went down sometime last night. Complete hard lock. All the lights were on, but no one was home. Well, I... Well, I don't think that host is ever going to come back on its own. It looks hard locked. You mind if I turn it off and on again? I'd rather you didn't. I'll see if I can restart it from the management console. Okay, if you think that's gonna work. Five minutes later. Did you get the host restarted? No, I couldn't connect to it. I'll try to SSH it. You sure you don't want me to restart it? It's not like I'm going to break it more than I really is. And the thing's still got two years warranty left. It's either going to come back up or not. Not at the moment. Let's see if I can get it working from here. 10 minutes later. It's still not responding, is it? No. Okay, give me five minutes. I go into the server room, turn the holes off, turn it back on again, and wait until network activity appears on the switch ports above. This takes about five minutes minutes of me essentially browning my trousers, waiting anxiously for a sign of life. Once the network activity LEDs on the switch spring back to life, I go back to the office. Fixed it. I saw it come back online. What did you do? Turn it off and on again. Edit. Bonus short story. As I was typing this up, one of the teachers came in, moaning that her sound didn't work. Looking at the amp, I immediately see the problem and go correct it. How did you fix it? I switched it on. Well, that made me look like an idiot. Hey guys, I'll be honest. Um, one thing I always learned about computers sometimes, you don't want to do a hard reset, but you have to. And second thing, things always work better when turned on or plugged in. That's one mistake a lot of people do. They complain something's not working and, and when they go to check it out, their stuff's not even on. So yeah, always check if your power is on first. I know the building is on fire, but I need to make a server backup first. Posted by u slash Oriku. This one is from way back in the day. In this case, the day is 2004. Got a call from the site and the lady just calmly asked me how to do a backup. On the old system she had, we recommended pretty frequent, like at least twice per day backups because the software was this junky old Unix slash Xenix monstruosity that if it crashed or locked up with a record open, it corrupt the entire database and they'd have to restore from the last backup. That could mean an entire day's worth of reeking from paper trails. So most of our clinics would back up once around noon, then again at close. So not abnormal to get that sort of call. As I was walking her through the steps to do a tape backup on these old systems, I become sort of aware of what sounds like a mini alley in the background, but he's too far from where she is and I can't really hear him. Then I start to hear something that sounds like shh sort of sound, which isn't super abnormal. A lot of vet clinics had their servers in weird places including around grooming or dental areas, so you'd sometimes hear equipment that made sounds like that. And she says, Oh no, the backup has to finish now. What if the water damaged the server? The water? What? I asked her what's going on, and before she can answer, the guy who was yelling came close and I very clearly heard, Ma'am, the build's on fire, you need to leave now. No, I have to get this backup done first, or we'll lose the data from this morning. Ma'am, again, the building is on fire, you need to leave. It will be just another 15 minutes. At this point, I figured the noise I heard was the overhead sprinklers coming on and also definitely heard someone say twice that the building was on fire. Uh, lady, I think you should really listen to the guy from the fire department. If the building's on fire, you need to get out. There's a backup off site from last night. It's not worth getting injured to avoid having to repeat three hours worth of data. What if the server gets wet? I have to take the server. The clinic's insurance should cover the cost of replacing it. And you can restore the off-site backup to the new server if it comes to that. 
please leave the building as it's on fire. If I store the backup now and take the server, will it hurt anything? Probably not, but again, you really should just get out. We can deal with any issues with the database after the building is no longer on fire. Whole time, the increasingly frustrated fire department guy is like, just get out of the building. And she snaps at him. The fire isn't even on this floor yet, it's on the second floor. Why are you in such a hurry? So she keeps arguing between me and the firefighter and is being told from two sides now to just either take the server if she really wants to and get out or just get out before they forcibly drag her out. Because at this point the fire is on her floor just in the ceiling, which is a pretty dangerous situation. She elected to unhook the server, cover it with her coat so it wouldn't get wet and live with it. I didn't get the call to hook it all back up, but they got everyone out, got the fire under control and there was only some minor smoke and water damage to the clinic from the parts lower than the ceiling. The ceiling and second floor had to be gutted and rebuilt though. I kind of admire her willingness to do her job and be that concerned about the server and the backup, but you know, building on fire, you should probably just leave when that happens. Hey, I'll tell you what, unless there's some crazy medical research inside of that backup that will save millions of lives, it's probably not worth for you to be in a building on fire just to save a few hours of work. So if you're ever in that situation, just get the hell out. Tell me lies, tell me sweet little lies. Posted by u slash the lightning count one. Another round of lying users getting put in their place. I have been working from home on the weekends and I'll soon be switched over to salary so I'm milking the hell out of all the overtime I can get. First call on Saturday. Hello, I need assistance resetting my password. Okay, I have to reset your password to be generic password and it will force you to change it on login. Can you reset it to be old password? Unfortunately, no. We're no longer able to set previously used passwords into the system. People had been abusing that in the past and there was a security event because of it. Total pack of lies. Can you make an exception for me this one time? Sorry, there's been a bit of confusion. I would if I had the permissions to do that, but the system will block me from using a previously used password. Even if it did work, the system would catch it and disable your password almost immediately. Uh, you don't understand. Unless I can set it to the same password, then I'll lose this loan. How, um, normally I would never ask this, but how? Well, my assistant and I have the same password. Are you and your assistant sharing accounts? No, I'm sorry, but I'll be unable to assist any further on this. I have reset your password to be generic password, and it will force you to change it on the next login. Here is my direct supervisor's email if you wish to escalate this. I pulled the call and filled the ticket on it. The VP over security replied within an hour and let me know he spoke with the user and informed him of the severity of sharing accounts. The user did send an email to my boss, but my boss just told me, good job. Second instance, thanks for... You have to help me. Whoa, sorry your urgency almost sounded like you're being attacked. Ha, <laughs> thanks. I'm trying to extract this file sent to me by my borrower and they're giving me errors in Adobe. Okay, let's take a look. Go here, click this, now use this code. Okay, we're connected. Took 20 seconds to see the issue. Okay, I can see the issue. What is it? These files are 0kb. The borrower must have incorrectly sent you the wrong thing. They'll need to send you then again. I do not think they did. Well, I can check the exchange side and see. Oh, one moment. Okay, it looks like the total size of that email is only 200kb. Most of that's your signature. The email was not malformed and it looks like there's no data corruption. The user must have sent the wrong thing. You need to reach out to them again and have them resubmit it. I already did. It made them mad. They said if we cannot get this working, then they will go with another company. At this moment, the borrower sent in another email that starts with, oops, I accidentally sent you the incorrect files. Here are the correct files. I clicked the email and said nothing. <sighs> thanks. Memorial Day, cell phone rings from an unknown number. What's up? 
Uh, this is me? Yes, it is. Who is this? This is user with our company. I was given this number by my manager. She said that you would be able to assist me with an issue today. Um, you hear those big bangs in the background? I'm at the range, more than 4,000 feet from any computer right now. Well, you have your phone, right? I need my password reset. I'm trying to close this loan and I'm at the bank right now. If we cannot get it reset, we'll lose that loan. No, you won't. Excuse me? It's Memorial Day and all banks are closed, even Walmart banks. The IT support team's closed as well today. Who is your manager? She's sitting right beside me. I'll put her on the phone. Yes, this is his manager. Are you able to assist? Never give my personal cell phone to anyone else again. I hung up. Ten minutes later, the phone rings. VP Oversales is on the line. Can you tell me why I have? Was that an explosion? I met the range and that was an exploding target. Why are you at the range? Because it's company holiday. I'm guessing you're with our company. And now we'll need to block this number too. Excuse me? Your team is here to support us. Why are you not in the office today manning the phones? It's a company holiday. Do not call me on my personal cell phone again. Do not give out my personal cell phone to anyone else. I pay for this phone and it will not be used for company purpose. I'll call your CIO then. Um, I can just hand the phone to him. He's the one who shot the exploding target. Who is this? Karen. Here to explain why my employee's personal cell phone has been blowing up for work-related purposes on a company holiday. She says something about losing a 4 million loan and loan officer being at the bank. My CIO had the phone, so I did not hear this. You can lie to the sport team all you want, but lying to me will not help you. It's Memorial Day and banks are closed. This is something that can wait until tomorrow. Do not give out my employee's cell phone to anyone else ever again. Do not call anyone's personal phone ever again. We have a support line and, and that is the only line you call to connect with the support team. He hands me back the phone and his Remington 270 rifle. Hey guys, I'll just say I worked for companies before and yeah, it can be a pain sometimes when people call your personal phone and that was one of the reasons why after a while they actually gave me a company phone and trust me, you'll be called some crazy hours. You can be like off work for six hours on a Friday night at the bar and someone gonna call you trying to get you to solve a weird problem. And hey guys, I hope you liked the video today. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the notifications button, leave a like and a comment. And I'll be seeing you guys tomorrow again with more Reddit posts. And if I don't see you guys, I hope you guys have a great weekend. Take care.